So guys, I know you completely love all of my philosophy videos, so that's why I'm making another philosophy video today. Now before we get into this, as you guys already can see by the title, today we're going to be talking about defensive options, but please do not forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe so that you can see more awesome philosophy, everyday carry, and survival and bushcraft videos. Now let's get into this few philosophy videos I've been talking about with everyday carry I've certainly mentioned defensive options but I've really been kind of skirting that topic and today I'm actually going to be doing a video on my top five or my most preferred defensive options for everyday carry and so as I'm sure many of you guys are not going to be surprised at all the top option on this and the most defensive the most defensive slash defensible uh, weapon or tool for defense every day is going to be a handgun and for this one I just have the Glock 19 here I just have the Glock 19 here uh, just as a handgun, but there are many different types of good options for handguns. MNP Shields, the fantastic option, and there's many, many different really great options out there for defensive handguns, but this is just my defensive handgun, and uh, this is going to be the placeholder for defensive handguns. Now, of course, it's pretty obvious how this is the most defensive option. It gives you range, it gives you a lot of firepower, it even gives you some level of intimidation. Not to say that <clears throat> you should just go around intimidating people with your defensive options, but uh, we can't lie that in a defensive situation, when things are going bad, <clears throat> sometimes even just the pulling out of a handgun is enough intimidation to actually stop the threat where you don't even have to fire around it's just there and people know not to mess with it and so or not to mess with the person who's has it and once again also it has a range to it so unlike many of the other options we're getting into uh, this knife or <coughs> this knife yes this knife this handgun is it adds a range element to it and so you can hit something that's further away something that's either charging you or something that is going to try and hurt you some of the reasons why this is not always the best option and why there are other options out there is because it comes down to several factors one especially a larger handgun like this and I do realize this is not a large handgun at all but a larger handgun like the 19 is harder to conceal you can't just throw it on your neck or throw it in a pocket uh, you have to have some type of rig for holding it you have to have some type of holster regardless to where it's positioned on your body uh, it can be positioned in multiple places and you can conceal this 19 relatively easily but still you have to have a holster set up for it. See, the biggest thing with a gun especially when choosing a gun is the ammunition and having a comfortable amount of it because unlike a knife or some type of other option other defensive option like a knife has no ammo limits to it you can continue to use a knife again and again and again and again uh, it doesn't run out of bullets whereas a gun it does and once the gun's out of ammunition it's effectively a paperweight and so that is a disadvantage to the handgun but probably the largest disadvantage aside from holsters and ammunition like quantity and the limited the limited amount of strike capability you have with the gun is ultimately legality and I think the biggest reason why we have to consider as EDC people we have to consider other defensive options is because these handguns are not legal everywhere you can't now I know some people like to illegally carry handguns places where they shouldn't but there are some places where you just seriously can't get away with that they'll detect the guns and take them away from you so it's not always legally feasible to have a handgun on you and so that's probably the biggest disadvantage to having a handgun or counting it on it for your everyday carry because one of the biggest things about having an everyday sir or everyday defensive option if I can speak today is that you you have it on you every single day because the most important thing for a defensive option regardless to what it is is that you actually have it on you when the defensive situation occurs when you have to defend yourself and so one of the biggest limitations with a handgun is if you don't have it on you <clears throat> in that defensive situation then what really good is having the handgun. You know here that not every single defensive option do I actually have on the table or 
I'm going to be showing physically, but the next one I'm going to be rolling in some pictures, and this is, I'm going to kind of have this two-toned. It's going to be the Spyderco Matriarch 2 and the Spyderco Civilian. So it's going to be both of those uh, <clears throat> knives, but kind of in one because they're basically the same knife. So the one though that I have personal experience with is the Matriarch. And so I'm gonna be rolling in some pictures of the Matriarch and talking about why this is one of my preferred defensive options. So the, the reason why this is ultimately number two is because one on the outside, and I'm gonna be rolling in some folded shots of this uh, knife and some open shots of it. But when the knife is folded, it looks really incognito. It looks pretty much like an interesting knife. You really don't see what it is until it's out. And so so I really like how it can be kind of a sleeper, if you will. Uh, the knife really is incognito. You don't really see or notice uh, what the blade and potential of this knife is until it's out. Another reason why it's really awesome is because it's not something like an auto, something like this AFK that's technically an auto. Um, the Matriarch and the Civilian are not very restricted knives because they don't have any springs to them. It's all manual folding. They just have a really nasty blade shape, which is really effective at defensive situations. And going more over to the Matriarch, the reason why I chose the Matriarch over the Civilian was because one, it's actually like half the price, but two, the two most important reasons are that one, it's a smaller and easier to conceal blade. It's easier to carry, conceal. And then secondly, the Wave, for some weird reason, the Emerson Wave is not available on the Spyderco Civilian. So the Matriarch, however, does have the Emerson Wave Wave. And so something that I really like about the Wave is with the feature, if you train with it, you can get that blade right as you pull it out of your pocket. You can deploy that blade immediately. So it's like instant. It's faster than an auto. It's faster than, you know, most of your standard manual folding knives. So <clears throat> it, it makes a far, it makes a really good defensive option, especially if you practice with it. And then getting over to the blade shape of that knife, it is very aggressive and very good at defending itself. Now disadvantages of course are the fact that unlike a handgun here it's obviously not ranged but it does also have the fact that it doesn't use ammo so that is also kind of nice but it still isn't ranged so you have to get up close and personal with your uh, target or your assailant whoever's trying to cause you harm and so that can be a little bit of an issue but still at some point is better to just have the matriarch or the civilian because <clears throat> it's better to right along to the number three option and that is one that I don't actually have on the table either unfortunately but I'm gonna be rolling in lots of pictures of it and uh, any good pictures I can find of it and that is the uh, the knife that I actually really want to get and that is the tops ice dagger this is on my like to get list I'm not sure how quickly I can get this thing because it's like I have other life obligations and unfortunately the ice dagger is not really that capable of a knife in other capacities so it's sheerly a defensive option but I'm really I'm going to get a nice dagger very soon and the reason why I chose the ice dagger for number three is because of its capabilities and its size and its <clears throat> its ambidextrous Ness. That is also something that I forgot to mention is something that I do like about the Matriarch and the Spyderco Civilian is they're both completely ambidextrous knives. You can flip the uh, pocket clips to either side. They're four-way positionable, at least on the Matriarch, it's four-way positionable. And even the Emerson Wave version is completely ambidextrous. So it's really nice for both lefties and righties. Uh, <clears throat> these knives are very ambidextrous and getting back to the Ice Dagger, it is also completely completely ambidextrous and that is a really big plus to it but some of the things I like about the ice dagger are the fact that it's very very easily concealable because you can wear it as a neck knife it's easy to carry it's really low print you don't have to worry about it being seen or being spotted or it drawing too much attention to you unlike a handgun because even if you're con carrying concealed in the gun prints it's going to draw attention whereas a neck knife is very low key very few people are going to see it but the nice thing is that it's still just as effective it's also very stout because it's a full tang fixed blade knife it's not going to have any trepidations that's the one thing I kind of dislike about the matriarch is it's really 
really thin the tip is very easy to break whereas on the ice dagger it's pretty much the opposite of the matriarch it's uh <clears throat> It's very thick, very robust, very strong, and it's meant for a lot of heavy duty use in defensive situations. And so I personally like the Ice Dagger a lot. As far as disadvantages go, um, some people may not like the price of it. It's more pricey than something like a Matriarch 2, but cheaper than a civilian. It's also a fixed blade and it has to be worn in a specific way. Once again, you can achieve really great concealability with fixed blades as neck knives, but they're pretty much relegated to only neck knives so if you don't like wearing a neck knife it might not be an option for you but personally I actually really do like neck knives and I find it really easy to carry and just set aside my neck for the defensive option and then having my more utilitarian tools like the folders just on my or in my pockets so I really like that ability so now we've basically moved out of all of our really defense oriented really combative kind of geared tools and now we're moving more over to utilitarian knives the first one and this is number four for defensive options everyday carry defensive options is the rat 3 slash se3 now this is a knife the knife connection customized rat 3 so that's why this one looks a little bit different but basically the rat 3 slash sc3 you guys know i have an sc3 and i've used it for years really love it i'm running the rat 3 right now but they're basically they're almost the identical knife like they're almost identical in size shape overall form everything they're basically identical but this knife is a really awesome knife the rat and se3 uh, are really great knives for defense because one they sit really flat you guys can see how thin the blade and even this customized handled version is still pretty thin on the handle pretty flat and overall it's a very flat sitting knife that sits up against your chest really well and then it has a very nice Nice, very pointed and thin tip to it so it's really great for penetrating cuts in defensive situations if you had to use it in those ways it's also a really good everyday carry knife for doing a lot of just box opening and stuff like that but it can be easily very easily pushed into a defensive role and work really well that blade shape and overall how it's designed blade shape and thickness is designed really well for penetrating cuts and just digging deep once again it being a fixed blade it's very stout and robust so if you had to bust this thing out in a and really use it in a defensive situation this is not the type of knife that's just going to break on you or snap its tip or something like that it's going to remain in the fight for a long time and be able to be used capably and competently as a defensive weapon that's one i'm a little bit torn uh you know i originally just wanted to say you know the chris reeves knives the benza but you know obviously most people are not going to go out of their way to buy this because this is nearly the same price as this. So this is a little bit too expensive to make the defensive options. And I think I might have still even picked a pretty expensive defensive option uh, for a knife. But once again, it's a great knife that is good for your everyday carry tasks as well as an everyday defensive situation. And that is, in case you guys can't already tell, the Benchmade 940 Osborne. Now this is the Dash 2 G10 version. I like this one a little bit more than the Illumina version because this one is stupid lightweight this is the lightest I believe of all of them maybe the carbon fiber one slightly lighter it might be slightly lighter than this one but it's like tenth of an ounce this one's like a good half ounce lighter if not more than the uh, aluminum version and I mean this thing weighs like nothing it, it's just completely featherweight and then on top of that you can go and ask Benchmade for an Adamus styled deep carry clip here and it buries the knife completely like hopefully you guys can see that when this thing actually sits in the pocket with a deep carry clip none of it is exposed it's completely hidden in the uh, pocket so that makes concealability really high and then thirdly you have a really strong blade because of course it uses the axis lock but this reverse tanto blade on this thing is just a monster uh, and it is an absolute monster for penetrations the tanto tip on this thing makes it strong 
and robust. It makes it you know, stronger and more robust than something like a really thin, unsupported tip like this. This is 1095, so it's a different type of strength, but uh, it's a really strong and refined tip that is also really, really good at penetrating, and it's really, really good at penetrating. So by no means would I be scared to pull this thing out in a defensive situation, and not only that, because it has a very thin blade, as you guys can see here, there's not much width to the blade. It's very good at penetrating deep and going in fast. And so it's a really nice blade for not just your everyday carry opening boxes and letters and stuff like that, but it's also a really good defensive option because one, you do have jimping, like on the back here, you have jimping in all the places that you need to get a nice firm grip on this knife, but the blade itself is also very capable and competent when it comes to uh, defensive and aggressive situations. Hope you guys have enjoyed this look at some of my preferred defensive options, whether it be a Glock or a gun, a handgun in general, not just a Glock, but a handgun in general being my top absolute. Then of course the uh, Spyderco Matriarch and Civilian. Then the Ice Dagger, which is an amazing neck knife. If you guys want a seriously dedicated, strong and powerful um, <clears throat> neck knife for defensive uh, defensive situations the ice dagger is a really good way to go then of course the rat and sc3 they're also very good and very strong edc neck knives and then lastly the benchmade 940 osborne in its multiple different configurations but the 940 osborne dash there are the 940, then the 940-1, and the 940-2 are higher-end knives, but they're all very, very good and very competent. Anyways, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this philosophy. Hope you guys have enjoyed this philosophy video about defensive options. I did want to actually get into it because I think defense is a really important part of everyday carry and it's not just one of the many things but it is a very important part because while we're not really using these defensive options every day it's important that we have them and we are prepared. Anyways guys, God bless and I'm out.